So, how about those Mongols, huh? Within decades of its founding, the Mongol Empire stretched from the eastern coast of Asia, across all of China and Central Asia, through most of the Middle East and into Eastern Europe. This may be the greatest understatement of the last 813 years, but that is a lot of land. Being the largest contiguous empire in history, it should come as no surprise that the Mongol Empire had major effects on the history of broader Eurasia. When you think of the Mongols, the first thing that springs to your mind may be horse-riding marauders, slaughtering everyone in their path and stealing everything they can find. This isn't exactly wrong, per se, but it certainly leaves out a fair bit of the picture. In contrast to their more violent side, the Mongols actually created a much more politically stable territory by replacing numerous squabbling powers with one united state. Additionally, they created a very safe environment for travelers, in particular traders. It was said you could walk from one end of the empire to the other, carrying a golden plate on your head without being robbed. This high degree of peace has been termed the Pax Mongolica by modern historians, playing off of the famous Pax Romana of the Roman Empire. Now, if there was one thing the Mongols loved more than wanton destruction and horses, it was trade. They encouraged traders to crisscross the empire, producing a flourishing of trade not seen for centuries before that point, and reinvigorating the Silk Road. The new, safe trade routes spread ideas and cultures across the empire. Mechanical printing, the blast furnace, and black powder all made their way westward from China, and information about artistic concepts, historical records, farming techniques, geography, medicine, and the sciences was transmitted across Eurasia. The empire also allowed for the transfer of goods from conquered regions into neighboring states. Silk Road trade introduced the Javanese to Persian-style textiles decorated with gold, brought Chinese designs to Egyptian silk weavers, and Persian potters began basing much of their work on Chinese ornamentation. The introduction of gunpowder from China revolutionized European warfare, especially on the seas, where cannons changed naval combat from a matter of ramming and boarding into a matter of pummeling enemy ships from a distance. European innovation in firearm technology would go on to have major impacts on global history. European matchlocks, wheel locks, and flintlocks were all far more convenient and accurate than Chinese hand cannons. These guns would add to the edge Europeans had during their conquests of the Americas, and would eventually allow them to conquer most of Africa. Additionally, movable European cannons would give Western empires a big advantage during their conquests of Asia, when they faced off against Chinese-style junks, which were armed with fixed cannons. Through these advancements, Europeans would shape the world in ways that couldn't possibly have been predicted at the time. In addition to the exchange of goods, the Mongols fostered trade of ideas and cultures. Muslims, Jews, Nestorian Christians, Eastern Orthodox Christians, Buddhists, and Shamanists all found themselves interacting in Mongol lands. Even European missionaries joined in on the fun, making their way into East Asia along the Silk Road, and bringing European ideas and practices with them. These missionaries sometimes served an additional purpose. Franciscan monks delivered intel to European powers concerned by the threat posed by the Mongols. While they were at it, these monks also spread tales of the Far East to the European elite, introducing a great deal of information that had previously been unknown. For the first time in history, Eastern Asia became more than a nebulous concept to Europeans. Of course, not every effect of the expanded trade under the Mongols was beneficial. Reopening the Silk Road trade routes opened new pathways for the spread of disease, including the infamous Black Death, which swept through Eurasia and North Africa in the 14th century. The plague killed tens of millions, wiping out as much as 60% of the European population, and untold numbers throughout the rest of Eurasia. In addition to the unintentional spread of the plague through increased trade, the Mongols played a more deliberate role in introducing the disease to Europe. During the siege of the city of Kaffa in 1346, invading Mongols used trebuchets to launch plague-ridden cadavers over the city walls in an early instance of biological warfare. From there, fleeing merchants brought the disease with them as they returned home to major trading cities like Genoa. So, mass murder, a wee bit of genocide, and one of the most devastating pandemics in history. Yeah, the Mongols weren't the best lot to hang around. That being said though, you gotta hand it to them. 
they certainly did play an incredibly significant role in shaping Eurasian history. For a time, their rule allowed an unprecedented level of interconnection in the Eurasian world, as the Pax Mongolica allowed goods, culture, and technology to spread across the continent. Even after the Mongol collapse, the legacy of the Silk Road would continue to shape world history. Its return to disorder and eventual disruption by the Ottoman Empire would lead Europeans to look for a new path to getting their hands on Asian spices. This would subsequently lead to the voyage in which Christopher Columbus introduced Europe to the existence of the Americas, as well as numerous imperialist ventures by Europeans. Mongol conquest served as a catalyst for change throughout Asia as dynasties were deposed and replaced by Mongol rulers, and after the collapse, new states would be formed in the Mongols' wakes. Through trade, warfare, the spread of disease, and the exchange of religious and cultural ideas, Mongol rule affected the whole of Eurasia. All in all, it's safe to say we owe those horse-riding marauders a whole lot of credit for the world we're living in today.